Good morning. I'm honored to be here with you today as part of the 2022 IWTO World Roundtable and quite proud to be speaking on behalf of the American Solar Grazing Association, a new and exciting arm of the American sheep industry. My name's Nick Armantrout and I'm here to talk with you about wool and green power. I've been working the last few years in a new emerging uh, arm of the industry, the solar grazing sector, and I'd like to point out a few things that I see uh, as perhaps growth opportunities for wool based on some experience working in wool textiles. I can tell you that the rapid and dramatic um, expansion of renewable energy as we move to try to solve our global climate um, crises um, is not all good, but it's not all bad either. My objectives today are to highlight the interconnection between sheep, wool, and solar energy production, to identify opportunities for the expansion of solar energy that could include wool production, to demonstrate the cost savings of managed sheep grazing in a solar project, and hopefully to join dual purpose sheep with dual use solar farms in the production of circular solar wool products. The addition of solar power plants to the landscape uh, raises concern for the effects of precipitation falling on the impervious solar panel surface and what effect that has uh, in uh, water quality, stormwater runoff, and sedimentation. Um, vegetation is used on the solar floor, uh, orchard floors um, as the main strategy to uh, control erosion, retain and filter water, and uh, protect the, the uh, local watershed. Uh, state and municipal governments may require deeper rooted native grasses and pollinator friendly plantings as opposed to uh, smaller stature, but also shallow rooted turf grasses uh, in order to um, permit a project to move forward to construction. That vegetation must be managed uh, in order for the solar energy plant to reach optimal production. Uh, to help site with site operations and safety. And that vegetation then requires uh, either mowing or prescribed grazing as a control. Um, additionally, conservation and agricultural groups, of course, are interested in seeing critical habitats and wildlife corridors protected and a continuation of agriculture, uh, uh, particularly where solar power plants are sited or in contact with uh, agricultural soils of, of uh, uh, local and regional importance. Some of the challenges to solar site operations and maintenance costs is the time required to perform vegetative maintenance. Uh, mowing is mowing is time consuming. Um, uh, trimming under panels is time consuming. And uh, the costs uh, for operations that are solar site need to remain low in order to avoid consumer rate increases as well as diminished investor returns. Uh, mechanical controls are expensive. Um, mowers can throw rocks. Uh, mow, uh, mowing itself can be ineffective in some circumstances. They can also cause uh, soiling to panels, which decreases production and even fire. Uh, additionally, marginal lands and brownfields, which are identified as choice for redevelopment um, uh, by communities, uh, understandably, may, may at times be difficult and dangerous to access. Um, when that's the case, you will find uh, in circumstances where chemical controls are uh, introduced or herbicides to control vegetation. Um, there are also continues to be a misunderstanding uh, amongst decision makers at times uh, uh, that need to be reacquainted with the benefits of grazing animals as a vegetative manage, uh, management strategy versus a concern of uh, over nutrification when stormwater comes in contact with manure. Sheep are really a natural solution for solar companies uh, to turn to to help manage uh, their solar facilities. They are excellent at keeping vegetation from shading PV modules and uh, grasses and, and brush from interfering with drives and reducing the production at the site. Uh, they reduce fire hazards and maintain a clean orderly facility. Uh, they help the uh, solar developer and the community to maintain an agricultural land use in conjunction with the power generation at the site. They're of course minimizing the carbon footprint uh, associated with vegetative control in the facility. And in some cases they can lower operations and maintenance costs well over 30% compared to traditional mowing uh, and the damages that can be caused by mechanical mowing. Um, we're, we're learning more about that all the time. 
really sheep are essential if the project energy costs are to remain low, which is going to be so important as we move forward um, in a to a transition of you know homegrown renewable energy. Um, this is an industry, the renewable industry, that needs sheep, and and how nice it is to feel needed. Solar grazing will be recognizable to many of you as facilities such as this one pictured are starting to pop up in your own localities. Uh, it is a form of prescribed or managed grazing that is using animal impact as a strategy to manage vegetation for improved soil stability, health, and function at solar arrays. A great deal of research into agrivoltaics, the combination of agriculture and solar photovoltaic energy production, is focused around food production, which is absolutely necessary. However, very little focus is being put towards animal grazing in solar sites, and almost nothing is being contributed or worked on around fiber production. Farms grow food, fiber, and fuel. Solar is really no different. Um, we have the opportunity to do all of the above. Um, we cannot afford to be bypassing uh, fiber production within solar, so more is absolutely needed. A move away from petroleum-based economies must include decreased production and consumption of the synthetic fiber that petrochemicals are used to produce. Sheep are available and have a growing presence in dual-use solar sites around the world. Increasingly, they are being employed as the simplest and most feasible uh, form uh, of management to deploy with little project modification or added cost. They really are a symbiotic form of management uh, that can coexist with uh, terrestrial birds, pollinators, flora, and fauna. So what exactly is the uh, solar grazing opportunity? Uh, it is a chance to access fenced and shaded, low stress grasslands, um, an opportunity for the farmer, the grazer, to maintain uh, an agricultural enterprise uh, within these new solar facilities and to partner with the uh, utility that's operating the site to meet the uh, land management needs uh, of, of the operations um, of, of the facility. Some of the unique properties of solar farms is that they are, they really are fenced, protected uh, grasslands, offering the grazers uh, protection from predators. Uh, they provide a cool, shaded, moist climate uh, that is being found to decrease heat stress um, in both sheep and uh, cattle. Um, that that is, uh, decreases the water consumption, which can be um, uh, favorable in particularly brittle climates. Um, uh, coming from New South Wales, there's the suggestion that perhaps there's, there's a greater number of pounds of wool produced per animal, uh, and stocking rates are affected. Um, and this starts to point to the potential for um, uh, solar sites to satisfy uh, or even exceed um, goals for animal welfare. Um, might these sites one day be used um, for approved uh, standards like to meet the, the needs of approved standards like the Five Freedoms, um, the uh, RWS, uh, and others. Uh, could solar uh, environment, what, what could that environment impart to the uh, wool fiber profile? Um, does that low stress, um, moist and cool environment uh, perhaps influence fiber strength or the point of break? Um, uh, lots more can be discovered there. And, and in particular, what would future life cycle analyses look for uh, in wool grown on solar sites? How do we account for the carbon impact of that specific type of activity and fiber? So solar grazing in the United States uh, specifically is a phenomenally fast growing part of the industry. Um, if you look on the left, this map from the Solar Energy Industry Association is identifying operating sites in yellow, sites under development in orange and sites under construction in red. The map on the right side is uh, tracking uh, states where solar grazing is now an established activity through the American Solar Grazing Association. And you can see where the two uh, mimic each other. Um, when you look at this growth and you look at what's in the pipeline uh, for solar development and the fact that these uh, sites really do need vegetative maintenance, and that the developers really are seeking grazers, um, there starts to be an opportunity to uh, 
create and rebuild markets, which is phenomenal. Obviously, I feel quite strongly that uh, solar uh, facilities uh, present an opportunity for wool products. Specifically, I would like to believe that there's an opportunity for circular solar wool products made from strong wool to uh, be an outcome of a partnership with solar energy development. Um, these are massive construction and earth moving projects. And when they are ready to go to operations, the soils that have been moved and disturbed need to be stabilized. Um, wool as a protein fiber formed from grass and air, water and sunlight, it wants to grow things. Um, I just started asking myself, uh, like some others, um, how can wool grown from sheep that are grazing solar sites be used to facilitate accountable, responsible solar construction and development? Um, if managed sheep grazing can stabilize and improve soil conditions, that concept can be expanded to the role of wool to perform the same function in solar construction projects. Um, new and improved environmental engineering and, in man and, and management products uh, could be designed based on wool to meet the needs of these massive global solar energy uh, projects um, in the form of erosion control products, um, uh, 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 stormwater wattles, silt fence, um, wool-based fertilizers, mulches, and hydro seeds um, that can be used as the first steps to uh, revegetate these sites. Um, also, because we obviously need to phase out the use of synthetic fertilizers that we are sourcing from globally limited resources and adversarial providers, um, we can develop wool fiber, fiber products um, that are designed to replace the mixed plastic geotextiles, um, specifically those that are uh, designed for contact with surface waters. Um, in some cases, prototypes exist. Uh, we need to partner with industry to forward um, the uh, development of these wool-based uh, erosion and water control products. So in consideration of renewable energy development, um, soil health and um, the tension of perhaps development on farmland, it's natural to arrive at a place of considering brownfield sites, contaminated or impacted farms, uh, touched by PFAS and other forever chemicals that are increasingly, um, frankly, touching all of us. Um, no exception for me in my own home state and uh, uh, neighboring farmers of mine. Uh, in Maine, we're starting to look at uh, the opportunity to direct solar development to impacted farms um, as a way to uh, preserve high value food producing soils but also as perhaps a solution for a form of continued production uh, for impacted farms and farmers. Um, it's been suggested maybe that uh, solar sites are, are like hitting the pause button uh, on these impacted farms as we learn more about how we might um, um, heal the environment. Um, we all know that wool can be uh, a very um, uh, high utility component to other environmental mitigations like oil spills, for instance. Um, um, and while looking at these contaminated soils, food production moving forward may be suspect, but what about fiber production? Again, we need to ask the questions of, of what fibers coming from animals grazing contaminated sites uh, might look like, might be used for, and is there products and revenue that might come from them? Um, I uh, absolutely believe that, want to believe that fiber production and wool could be an important part of uh, phyto remediation and biology worth studying further at these locations. So I want to make a note on where wool could perhaps be positioned within the expansion of renewable energy. And that is that colleges and universities are often at the forefront searching for renewable energy supplies uh, in order to decarbonize their operations and in some cases decarbonize their uh, endowment funds, or pension funds, and investments that are, are uh, paying for their operations. Uh, most notably to satisfy uh, stakeholder interest at the university um, um, where we are looking for help in solving our, our climate crises. So we have the opportunity to be placing wool and, sh and sheep within these solar sites uh, with the upcoming generation 
to re-educate them about the importance of grazing animals, the importance of wool, at the very moment when these individuals, this next generation, are considering their value, their contribution to the world, we can place sheep and wool there and help to reacquaint them with, with both. So the wave of solar energy development, while um, at times concerning, uh, is something that should give us pause, but it's also something that those of us involved here with wool textiles, a product of animal agriculture, might also recognize as an opportunity to reframe um, uh, animal grazing and land-based fiber production. As these solar sites are uh, a chance to bring something from the margins uh, that is misunderstood uh, back to the forefront um, uh, to great, uh, breed greater understanding, um, but also to bring solar and grazing animals to communities that have been missing them for quite some time. Uh, there's also the chance that, that with solar development, uh, cropping land or land closed to animal grazing might be opened. And in so doing, there could be opportunities for underserved and underrepresented farmers who might not otherwise have access to land to access acres for grazing. Um, and that solar wool and solar sheep um, uh, grazing these power plants and producing food and fiber as an outcome is something that no plastic product is able to do. Um, and wool needs to maintain its, its place um, as part of that outcome and that conversation. There's an old saying where I'm from that goes, uh, well, they're not making any more land. And that is absolutely true. Um, uh, land is precious and agricultural land is, is e even more so. Um, when solar is sited on the land, be it ag land or not, and solar alone, it's just another monocrop. Um, sheep and wool um, can help to maximize the positive outcomes. It's about more good, not less bad. Let's get sheep and wool in solar sites, maximize the positive from co-located activities where we are stacking the enterprises of grazing, producing lamb and mutton, wool, soil building, and um, over time, measurable carbon sequestration. That's a future for wool that I think is quite hopeful. Thank you.